Good evening, everyone. As we come to order tonight for um, August the 12th, committee meetings for our county, I'd like to take just a moment and um, speak about Howard. We're, we're honoring his memory tonight, and uh, our former chairman of our Hamlin County Legislative Body, our friend and colleague, Reverend Dr. Howard Shipley, made his, eternal, made his way to his eternal home this past July the 29th, and I felt it fitting to give him honor tonight. Um, it wasn't just me. Uh, several commissioners asked me to do so, but Howard was a friend, and he was a leader to many, including Hamlin County and this commission. He led this body with honor and integrity. As chairman and as commissioner of the 7th District, he did exactly what we're here to do, to try to do our best for our constituents in our county. We may disagree on something, but it was Howard, Howard's fervent prayer, if you will, to do the best he could do. And I think that's what we all hear about. He, uh, he exemplified that. He was always trying to do that. He wanted to leave something behind that made Hammond County a better place than when he found it. Chairman Shipley had many accomplishments in life and as commissioner of the seventh district. However, as I see, one of his greatest was that Chairman Shipley was a great man. Howard was a good man. So if you would, let's honor him with a moment of silence, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> There's a lot of things we could have said about Howard, but that's in a nutshell. Thank you all for giving me that opportunity. So welcome, everyone. Uh, the rules are in the back of the room to anyone that uh, would like to have those. There's a couple of things I need to go over. Let's see. Today's committee meetings, uh, for today's committee meeting, rules are in the back, and I will remind that public comments are on agenda items only. And tonight, in order to accommodate a request, we will adjust our committee order. Uh, we were going to look at Public Services Committee first. So in doing so, I'd like to call on Commissioner, <coughs> Chairman, Mike Richardson, and call your committee to order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I call this committee to order. Uh, anyone like to uh, speak to uh, agenda items only can do so at this time. You have three minutes. Seeing none, we'll, we'll go on. There's no old business, new business, uh, 4A Resolution 24. It's a resolution to seek God's hand of mercy and healing on Tennessee. This mimics the uh, state of uh, uh, Tennessee's resolution for prayer and fasting for July. Um, so um, we have that in the, in the uh, minutes here. Or in the, uh, the minutes. So anybody would like to add to or take away from this? Uh, any discussion before we ask for a, a motion? Chairman, I'll make the comment that uh, I attended a, a prayer here in Hammond County that the, the state with a joint session or joint resolution out of the Senate and the House of Representatives came up with this, that, that we make Tennessee uh, look at July as a month for prayer and fasting for the he you can read the resolution it goes over many points but it was such an idea that uh, Commissioner Huntsman asked me if we could forward this and, and include it for Hamlin County and I thought it was a grand idea and and proposed that to Chairman Richardson mm -hmm. so there we have it thank you so uh, we have a motion to make that a resolution adopted by Hamlin County I'll make the motion we have a second with Ms. Howell. <coughs> Motion made by Mr. Walker. Any discussion? 
No, we'll, none. we'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed by the like sign. So that resolution carries, the motion carries. Uh, item 4B, surplus items for the Sheriff's Department. Looks like there's two pieces of equipment, a Ford Explorer and a Dodge Charger that they would like to uh, surplus and move to uh, Gov deals for auction. Uh, we have that in the form of a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second by Mr. Lum. Any discussion? If none, we'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, <coughs> like sign. Seeing none, the motion carries. Uh, resolution or 4, 4C, Resolution 24, Resolution to amend the post construction stormwater runoff regulations of Hamlin County, Tennessee. I'm going to ask Mr. Harrison to come up and explain this. Good evening. Uh, I'm Clint Harrison, civil engineer here in Morristown. Uh, I do consulting work for the county. Uh, anytime they have stormwater uh, items that come up in front of the county, uh, I help with the planning commission, that kind of thing. So uh, this is just one of those items that um, the state of Tennessee has had stormwater regulations for communities throughout the state for years and years. They've gotten progressively more uh, um, in detail and uh, they have a current permit that requires counties and uh, municipal stormwater producers to uh, have stormwater regulations to address erosion control, sediment runoff, those kind of things. And uh, those regulations have been in, the, the rules have been in place for years. Uh, some of the bigger towns that have staffing and, you know, folks that can write those regulations have, they, they're first on the list. They usually do those things uh, first. And so Hammond County has just been given, and, and not just Hammond County, lots and lots of counties, smaller counties that don't have staff to handle those things have been given leeway uh, hey, we, we see you're making the effort. We know that you're on your way. Um, we've just gotten this year to the point where, hey, the, the grace period's kind of over. Uh, here's some regulations that other folks have done, and maybe you can mimic those. So we've gone through those together with the staff and tried to make some common sense uh, additions or subtractions or revisions to those regs and make them our own and uh, we've done that um, it's taken several iterations and we've presented it uh, i think to the body and uh, if you have any questions i can answer them and uh, we're just uh, trying to you know get the get the hammond county in compliance with the rest of the state and the rules that are already in place thank you Ms. Yes, thank you. Uh, so how are we how are we in hamlin county i mean are we yeah, on one to ten being terrific. What number are we? Well, there, you know, there's a lot of, uh, um, I guess, guidelines you could go by measuring where you are, but um, I think in general, um, when I look at things going on with stormwater, it's always a, a matter of, well, you know, how many calls do we get? How many how many times are we having people that are out of compliance? And uh, I, would, I would recommend or point you to the county staff that, that kind of handles that thing, but I am a consultant for them. So I usually get one a month or, or something. It's not violations necessarily. It's, hey, we're going to do a project. We need to do a permit. Uh, can you come, you know, tell us if we're doing all these things right? Uh, and, and so, uh, you know, I don't think it's not, it's something that I do on a consulting basis only, and so I, th I think in general, Hammond County's taking care of things, uh, and, and we kind of mimic with Morristown, you know, kind of try to see what they're doing, and, and I think we do a good job in the county addressing any issues that come up. Um, the other thing is a measure would be um, what they call uh, Category 5 streams or impaired streams and they go test those things and they give us the list and they say you know we think based on the data this is these are impaired streams and uh, you know i i've seen the list for the whole state and there's lots of counties with a lot more category five streams on them than ours i mean we have ours but the ones that i see typically are due to agriculture 
uh, almost all of them are E. coli or, or the, some of those things that have to do with agriculture. Not, um, hey, you've got people dumping, you know, stuff in your streams, and this is why this is the way we've listed it. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, Ms. Green? Quick question. You touched on something that had hit me in the heart, the agriculture part. Uh, it is massive, and to be brutally honest, I didn't get all the way through. But when I got started on the land disturbances, and you know as well as I do, when you get farmers that are working out where cattle can get the streams or whatever, is that this going to affect them? Because it was so massive, I didn't get read through it over the weekend. We didn't get it till Friday, honey, and that didn't help. There, there is a, there is a huge part of the permit that exempts farming from regulations that would make it a hardship. Um, the, I, I don't know the right term, but basically, I don't say it excludes them, but um, they're given leeway uh, for farming operations as it applies to the permit uh, application. But I'm assuming they still have to put in for a permit at some point. Uh, it, it depends on what they're doing, but um, I think just in general, the, the farmers are exempt from permitting on most of the things that they do that are, that is disturbing soil just because of the nature of their, of their business but um, um, there there are times I'm sure that that if the state found an issue that they would go directly to the farmer any other questions mr. Harrison if not we have anybody to make a motion thank you Clint we have a motion. Motion. Motion from Ms. Ahern. Do we have a second? Second. Second, Mr. Harville. Any discussion? Seeing none, let's call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed by like sign. <coughs> the motion carries. Well, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> okay. I wonder, is this the time to... Do we bring up any noise stuff? It's, it's not on the agenda. There we are. Thank you. What, what is your... Well, my concern is um, I was talking with a friend today who was at a wedding, and, and she said, by golly, at 11 o'clock, they pulled the plug. Now, this was out of town. And then she was at something else in uh, Jefferson County, and she said at 1030, You know, instead of worrying about how much noise there is in the world, what if we said at, at 11 o'clock you're through with, with the noise, and um, at 12 o'clock, well, I'll, I'll take the 11 o'clock you're through with the noise business, and henceforth uh, you, will, you will be fined, or, you know, if you don't, that's a... That's a, that's a number one violation, and um, if you get three violations, you have you're you're finished. You have to uh, get another permit. Uh, I think we've been spending a lot of time on how much noise, and instead of other counties have no difficulty with. Oh my goodness, um, it, it's almost eleven. We need to be through with the band and um, or the radio or what, what what do they call those what anything anyway uh and and that's something i just think we we need to address we've been two years on how much noise is noise versus it's going to stop so that's what i wanted to bring forward thank you sir chairman so. cutshaw yes ma'am mass speak Concerning what she brought up, sir, Go ahead. please. Go ahead. I agree with you 100%. And I think Commissioner Neesmith said it best when he said he knew how to pull the plug at 11 o'clock. Yeah. We have kicked, I'll use the term that some of you used for the jail. We have kicked it down the road, mm -hmm. in and out, till it's about time we developed a backbone and answered to our citizens. I don't know about the rest of you, but if I live close to that, I'd be tempted to get a little more drastic than those good folks have. They're a lot better folks than I am. 
because I've been tempted to cut the prayer off. But we need to do something about it. It's been way too long. Now, to refer to your kicking the can down the road, ma'am, we are working on that. And Commissioner Richardson is in process of bringing more things to us. What Commissioner Howe just brought up will be a dandy idea to talk with when this comes back on our agenda and try to get something done. It's not that this body doesn't want more government like you want more government in this case. You want more government to step in and tell somebody what to do. That's what you're asking. So I'm just saying that this body is going to be taken up when we can. Uh, to her point, this body also has passed a resolution already. What was the time, Mike? Uh, it was, it, it, we considered, was it 11 or 12? We have a resolution where we ask. Excuse me? I don't, I don't remember the yes. time. But. but we did, you know, we have something in place now. We already have something in place that asks for people to subside. And we have been told, we have been told that all we can do is a $50 a day fine. Somebody making $5,000 a night. That doesn't matter. It, that, exactly. So we can do this. We can do this. We can go and write them a citation each and every day and let them pay their $50. So what we're trying to do is find something more complete and, and see what we can do. But I take offense to you kicking the can down the road. We are working on this. It's in front of us. So it's therefore, been two years, sir. Yes, ma'am, I understand that. And, and we brought something, and, and it came back to us. We did bring something. Again, I take offense to that. Mr. Neesmith, did you have something? Yeah, um, Peggy, you know, you used to talk about shutting it off at 11. These bands start playing at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and they play at 11. They play eight or nine hours. Amen. So it's not, you got noise from dark, six, seven, eight, nine, right on up. Amen. We need to move on, Miss Hall. Oh, no, 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 no. You it's, we'll we'll move on and bring it up next time. That's all I have. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <coughs> we will now revert back to our regular order. Uh, call on justice. Center and Public Safety Committee Chairman Tim Horn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll call the Justice Center Public Safety Committee to order. Anyone wishing to address it, this may do so at this time. You'll have three minutes. Now we 2343 Joe Stevens Road. I have one thing to say, and that is. When do this, does the negotiation start? Kicking something down the road. Hmm. Hey, Amen. Anyone else? If not, old business, we have none. New business, Justice Center <coughs> project update, Tony Pettit, Burwell Construction. read through the boring numbers and then we can see some pictures um, uh, this is the the contract amount through change order uh, 22 we don't have a change order tonight 94 million eight hundred and seventy three thousand seven hundred thirty seven dollars and eleven cents contract substantial completion now this is a little discussion here the contract substantial completion is September 30th of this year Currently, the contractor's behind. Um, he's got a couple of major subcontractors that he's leaning on pretty heavily, and but the substantial completion date is going to be extended toward the end of the year. We haven't got a final date yet. But re remember also that after substantial completion, which is defined as the owner may be able to use the building as it for its intended purposes. He's got 60 more days for final completion, and that's when we write him the final check, everything, the punch lists are done and everything like that. So right now he's working on when his substantial completion is actually happening. Um, but it's not gonna be September 30th. Um, we'll, he's working on that. He should have that schedule complete. He's meeting with his subcontractors. Um, as, 
last week, this week, all day scheduling meetings, trying to get that refined and ident identified. So any questions about that? You said, yes. I apologize, sir. You said it would be when now to finish it. I apologize. It'd probably be, you'll still be operating in the first quarter of 2025, but it'll probably be maybe toward March. I'll, I won't really know until he finishes his exercises of refining his schedule. But substantial completion looks like it's past November 30th and it may be December 30th. Are you talking? Yeah, you, you talked about the, if I didn't misunderstand you, pushing the contractors underneath him. May I ask what the problem is? Manpower. They just, they just can't get the skilled cat, craft workers that they need. Uh, they're running somewhere between 120, 150 people per day. I try to count them on Wednesdays, uh, or Fridays. There, you got some people working 12-hour day shifts and some people working 10-hour day shifts, and then mo majority of them working four eight, uh, five eights, which is they're 40 hours a week. And then we got some last two weeks. There's people working weekends trying to pick up their schedules, but um, there is. Um, somewhere around 120 to 150 people on that job every day working. Every day being the weekdays, the tails off on the weekends. But, um, the contractor's aware of his obligations and where the con contractual substantial completion date is. Thank you. Okay. So that's some of the bad news. Um, Build to date through July is $86,593,944.11, which is 91% build. Material stored on site or off site is still somewhere around, well, it's not somewhere, it's $6,458,000, which is still a bunch of, that's a lot of big jobs, you know, you got material stored. And, um, so if you take that and do that math, the actual work in place is 80,135,944, which is 84.47% complete. Um, what the activity is going on is drywall finishing, painting, ceilings have started. So some of the finishes in the building have, have begun to, to be installed. Millwork started, um, floor polishing, uh, a lot of that's done already. Some of you, I think, even on the tour, we get to saw, got to see some floor polishing. Um, the electrical rough end, which is really the sticky point for all the substantial completion. This guy's got 24 guys on the job. He probably needs 40. Mm. He just can't find them. Um, Mechanical rough in, they kind of work hand in glove with the mechanical. And it, when I say rough in, it's the stuff above ceilings, it's the stuff in walls. Though the walls are pretty well covered up right now, <coughs> but there's a lot of work yet to go on above ceilings. And uh, when we start talking about ceilings or finishes are going in, that's a good sign. Um, the plumbers are setting fixtures. We'll see a couple of pictures here if you haven't already taken a glance, glance at that. Uh, outdoor concrete and outdoor final grading will begin this week. So it'll start shaping up a little bit around there. Let's see if I can operate this. Okay. Uh, you know, we talked about them closing up that one area there at, on the east end where they were feeding materials into the job. But you, this uh, view shows the sally port where they come in and it's actually a garage where p people that are gonna be detained or booked or not booked or pulled into there and, and then taken into intake on the lower level. This is a shot back around the other side where you see the front entrance and the columns and, and um, you see that expansive roof up there. Over here is probably the most changed over the last other than the fact we closed that one end up. But over the last month, this is the most changed. You see the uh, concrete uh, truck turnaround. You'll see the 
on the very, very right side, you'll see the cooling towers and the two generators down, and there, that's a real steep bank. We talked about access there and decided we'd address that later if we, went, if we needed to be. And that's the concrete there. That concrete crew will continue around the front. We've been uh, working on trying to get some uh, communication lines out of the way, and I would like to say that they're finally getting moved out of the way, out of the contractor's way, to where we didn't incur any kind of delays there. Um, that alleyway between the tower, the tension tower, and the Justice Center itself, we call that the Judge's Alley, and that's kind of their entrance. That's concrete now. This is the top floor. I thought this would be an interesting shot where I'm standing if I was incarcerated. I would be standing on the floor looking out in the rec yard, and that's my view. And the top floor, I don't know how you, how you get to the top floor, but that's the one I'd want to be in because you can see the blue sky up there. Kind of, uh, that mesh. There's another shot. This is on the mezzanine level looking down uh, to the ground level in the detention area. The gray spot beyond there above the door is the control tower so they have a vision back out to the, these areas the unfinished block is where the showers are going to be um, that is uh, that is a epoxy finish that's starting this week they were looking for a delivery for the materials they were prepping the walls before they installed today uh, some of the commissioners walked back into the mechanical area and i wanted to give you another shot of what they look like. This is the mezzanine area taking another shot the other way. Um, these two, uh, I just remember when we were talking about this way back in pre-bid about how many doors we wanted to have that was access doors for feeding or anything like that. And so there's several, not several, a few doors that have these traps that allow them to pass food in from outside to inside it makes it more safe and then also the good sign of the, talking about the electrician being a little bit behind uh, you see some security wiring being pulled looped up in those doors that's a good sign this is a security ceiling that goes in at the mezzanine areas and it's a screw-in facility it, it, that really looks sharp if you ever Get back in there again. We'll go on a tour or two before we can't get out. Uh, and we take a look at that. That's sharp looking. <coughs> get another shot. This is exterior at an entrance way on the far uh, east side of the building. I think that's kind of <coughs> an active entrance way. Main entrance. Some of the finishes we talked about is hard tile. Plumbing fixtures are in, are going in. They're not in yet. They're beginning to install. This is a courtroom. I hope this just shows up a little bit better on your screen than it does on this projector. But you kind of get the nuance of the uh, stain and everything there. That's a shot taken down in, in the main quarter. There will be terrazzo on the floor here. But you see the reveal strips in the drywall will kind of accent that out. And that's looking toward the front door. Kind of the status of a room that we have. Another gang, uh, we call them gang toilets, but they're large toilets, restrooms. And uh, with the ceiling, with the uh, hard tile. Your entrance. And that's it. Um. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, on that last picture, um, you know, since the Oklahoma bombing, will we have any of those, you know, planters that a Hummer can't jump or, you know what I'm talking about, those, you know, any kind of a barrier? Uh, I don't think I've seen that into the okay. project. So. Okay. <coughs> All right. Thank you. <coughs> Ms. Green. Quick question. I noticed you're talking about polishing the floor. Are you having any problems with cracks, bends at the ones that we rent? And I'm I noticed 
when we went through, I noticed down on what they call the holding floor, and I hope I got my terminology correct. If I didn't, please correct me. Uh, I noticed how that they were able to stick their arm underneath the door. Are you having any problems with cracking in the floor, especially the bottom layers, being that they're like they are and that the concrete is like it is? I asked a lot of questions, and they left me with a lot more questions, to be really honest with you, but being that concrete is not right up to that door and there's that much distance. Are you having a problem with cracking in the floors, especially the bottom? I'm going to try to answer this as best I know how. The, the, the deflection of the beams caused that uh, gap under the floor. It caused a gap under the, under the uh, sails too, but we were able to address it and the contractor did a, did a good job fighting off any ex extra cost because the caulk went from what had been that to that. So we didn't have any issues with the call, unless he watches the YouTube channel of this and comes back after us. But so far, so good. It really showed up when we put the, started swinging the doors in, and there's a requirement in there. TCI saying we need to be three eighths, close to three eighths of an inch. They noticed this before any of those sales were set. So they were instructed by the notes on the drawings by the structural engineer when they poured that first elevated slab and said it's sagging it's deflecting they didn't say sag they said deflecting and um, because there's specific language in there that says you pour to depth you don't shore or reshore you pour to depth and let it go where it's going they monitored that at that time before they Poured the second level, they brought it to the structural engineer's attention, and he said, This is the design, it's still within design tolerance. They monitored that deflection all the way through adding the block walls down the middle. Let me see if I can go back here. This block wall over on the left side, this was that the deflection was measured before that was there. The, st the sails here, uh, all through here, we're looking at a mezzanine level here. I don't know whether I got one this time or not. But anyway, they, they monitored that deflection to see if it was moving up or down anywhere. It did not. The initial deflection when they poured the wet concrete and it locked into the shear stud made the final connection. Okay, so it's not deflecting any further. Now, the question you asked was, does, it, is the concrete cracking? And I will tell you, and I've been doing concrete since I was made to get outside and I watch cartoons, so I've 12 <laughs> years of concrete cracks. Okay. And there's a lot of things that you can do to help mitigate as much cracking as you can. So you will see some cracked concrete in this job, but it's not cause of anything structural. And there won't be a lot of, considering the amount of contract concrete in this building, there won't be a, a lot of that cracking. But I can't say there's no concrete cracking. It will be some cracking in there. And it's just contraction. As the concrete cures, it dries out, it gets smaller. And um, the inside concrete always gets smaller and always gets harder. Outside contract concrete, you have to expand and contract it all the time because the temperature changes. Inside concrete, once you get it uh, climatized, it always just kind of shrinks a little bit for years and years and years and years. But structure, I think you're asking about the structural integrity of that slab and it is, it's within tolerance. It's just that tolerance that's allowed for that deflection of that beam is different than the tolerance that TCI requires for the underneath the door. And that's the issue. All right, my next question. Okay. They've I was not, hoping I'd answered that one so good. I you you answered well, but uh, when we went through with you folks, it was emphasized that they still had a lot of machinery to bring up, and I think you passed that end earlier where we were watching them bring it up to the end and so forth. That's quite a bit of weight. I was raised on the farm, so that's quite a bit of weight. 
So my question to you is, when you get all that extra weight in there, and we're talking about everything from tables, beds, everything, are we going to have problems? Not with that, not with that issue, no. It's, it's done what it's supposed to do. It's locked in. Is oh, it it's, safe? It's safe, yes. By the way, TCI is requesting a letter from the architect stating that it's still within design criteria. He's got the same concern, but it's- We had a long it, conversation coming out, I enjoyed it. It hasn't, um, and he may be doing that for the benefit of uh, us. So, um, but it, the contractor's been monitoring it ever since he's placed a slab. And after it cured, it's not. I can't find a door picture one. There's some, but that's up and level. That one shows a little bit about it. But they've monitored that hole ever since they poured that first slab. Any other questions? No, the one that I would like to know is when the contract attorney's going to step in, but I don't think you've got that party, so. I, I know that's right, but I'd like to know from the mayor when they're going to start with a contract appearance. That $64,000 deal, I'm fixing the doors, got my attention. Yep. <coughs> Any questions? Any others? Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, Tony. Mr. Chairman, that's all I have. Thank you, sir. That concludes that committee. We'll now move into... The Finance Committee, <coughs> Chairman Hahn, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Finance Committee is called to order at this point. Anyone wishing to address the Commission, you have three <coughs> minutes. You may do so at this time. Seeing none, so let's move ahead. We'll go down to, there was no old business, so we'll move into new business. Item 5A, Mr. Mayor, the bid tabulation, OFID. In your packet is the, the bid tab for the uh, bid that we did for the RFID service, which is your radio frequency ID for prisoners. And what this is is, is a, a band that the uh, prisoners will were, were wear and when they're uh, served a meal, uh, the, CO will scan that to prove, you know, to, to prove, and it'll show up in records that they were served their meal or served or given their medicine, or uh, also the um, uh, COs will have to, when they do their their rounds, they'll have to to scan in on like the far end of a housing unit to to. Uh, document that they've been on their rounds and that kind of thing so so this is the service that that RFID is and and then and if you look at the tab in your packet there were four um, bidders uh, the low bid was um, autonomy today or doing business as Cadmus and a, a five-year contract is uh, $65,000 that was the, the low bid and the best bid as um, evaluated uh, by, the, by the, our committee that looked at them. And uh, the recommendation is we do a five-year contract with um, Cadmus or Autonomy uh, today for $65,000 and that you authorize me to uh, negotiate a contract for next year. Uh, those are stronger than the hospital ones, right? I mean, they're going to stick on there. And Okay, thank you. Mm. Do I have a motion to approve? <coughs> Don't move, Mr. Turner. Thank you, Mr. Doughty. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Harville, thank you very much. Do we have any other questions or comments for the mayor? We'll vote the motion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Move down to five, uh, item 5B, 
proposed road paving projects for the year 24, 25. Oh, there we go. We'll have uh, our incoming road superintendent. sections we try to uh, go around and put you know get some in each section overall in our phases uh, there's 407 below 407 miles road in Hamlet County we drove the other day we drove over 700 miles picking these roads out and going back over them back and forth and, uh, that's how we ended up getting these as we was doing that, we was noticing some of the roads that we used to have to pave. Now that you all have got us this milling machine and these equipment, that we can just mill them out and save a lot of these roads uh, longer. So we want to thank you all for that because it is working. We we'll started noticing that we can prolong some of this before we have to pave them because of the equipment that you got us in milling. And the guys are doing a great job at that. Uh, they take pride in their work, and I'm proud of them. Y'all should be able to see a difference between the old patches and what we got now. Uh, we'll go to this second page. Uh, the first part of it's got the state aid projects. That's not what we're here for. That's just for us. If you don't care, skip over that. Go to down to where it says for the phase one fall. Uh, 24. This phase one is what we would like to get done this fall and get them paved. In order to do that, we're going to have to uh, hurry up. So I've, if we wait too long, I can't get them prepped and get them paved by this fall. And uh, that's the reason we're here a little early. And then we also, would, so that's the ones that we'd like to get. And how we got these estimated, we went back to the last three roads that we've paved. And we've got the uh, estimated cost on them per mile for the last three roads, and that's how we come up with these prices for the roads that we're fixing to do. That's the estimated cost. So, like I say, we'd like to go ahead and get to all this phase one done this fall, and get something paved. If you look at the phase two, it's Chucky River Road. And I'd, I'd like to ask for that too, because I would like to this winter if it's weather is able i'd like to get this road prepped this winter for spring <coughs> pave it this spring uh, chucky river is going to have to have a lot of prep to it i don't know if y'all drove it or not but if you drive it you'll, it's going to be easy to find it's, we're going to have to do a lot of prep for that so i'd like to have this winter time to get it ready for spring and uh, so that's the reason we're asking for that so we're actually asking for nine hundred thousand to get phase one and Chucky River phase two. That's what we would like to uh, ask for. Any questions <clears throat> for Mr. Weiskart? Motion. I have one. Yes. Are you going to have to hire more help in order to be able to pave, sir? I'm hoping not. Okay. We're a few short now that we're going to have to hire back, but you know, I shouldn't ask for any more in four weeks. How many are you short, sir? Right now, I'm two truck drivers and a mower. Okay. Quick question. When you, and I know this is outside of your paving, but if I remember correctly, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because I am wrong every once in a while, when they decided to go with what I call a one arm garbage truck, and I may have used the wrong analogy. If I did, I apologize to you. Will that help you as far as having staff as far as paving? Will that help you in here? Will that just hinder you, dear? As far as the, the paving and the, and the garbage, that's two separate entities. I can't okay. use a garbage man on the road. Uh, that's two separate things. It's all run about out of our building, but that is actually two separate. It doesn't intermingle then. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I didn't know that. Thank you. Right. Anyone else? Okay. Do we have a motion to approve? Make so, a motion, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Long, do I have a second? A second. 
Mr. Harville, thank you. We'll vote the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Item 5C, <clears throat> resolution to authorize cooperative purchasing with the United States General Services Administration cooperative purchasing program for the use and benefit of all county departments. Mr. Mayor. Chairman, this is um, a resolution that uh, would allow us to purchase off federal GSA purchasing contracts and um, for us to um, be able to do that by equipment off of them, by um, furniture or whatever uh, items, that public safety items primarily uh, off GSA is we have to have this passed and, and we are uh, you have in, in previous years passed re resolutions to allow us to purchase from other uh, cooperative purchasing organizations and this is the one that uh, the federal government offers uh, local, local and state government have a motion to approve so moved mr. Doty we have a second so, Mr. Richardson, any discussion or any questions for Mr. Uh, Britton? We'll vote the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? It's approved. <laughs> Item 5D, a resolution to add federal purchasing language <clears throat> to the Hamlin County government's purchasing policies. Mr. Mayor. In in the last several months, uh, you know, we've come to you for permission to apply for uh, this grant or that grant. And most of it's federal money that flows through the state. And the state is required to follow um, uh, federal purchasing guidelines, which means if the state's required to, then we're required to. And so in our purchasing uh, policy, we need to add this verbiage that's in this resolution for us to be in compliance uh, so that we're not, uh, so the money's not, there's not a clawback. They don't ask for their money back so that all of our purchasing requirements are, are met uh, with the federal government. So that this is just an amendment to our purchasing policy that uh, the federal government looks for. Have a motion to accept. Second. Mr. Reed. Second, Mr. Huntsman. Any questions for the mayor? We vote the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. <clears throat> Any opposed? Motion passes. Item 5E, OP, uh, excuse me, Opioid Abatement Committee, MOU. Mr. Mayor. This document that's in your packet is, um, and, and you'll see that uh, the watermark of draft two, this is the second draft of it, um, is an agreement between the city and county whereby the, the city basically transfers all their opioid settlement money to the county and uh, our opi opioid um, abatement committee uh, will uh, manage those funds. And uh, the committee met uh, last week and, and we went through uh, some processes that we want to go through, some standards that we want agencies to meet, and, and so we're we're headed down that road. Um, uh, so what this organization or what this uh, memorandum does is, is it sets the guidelines for uh, a joint operation of of an opioid abatement program uh, in terms and conditions under utilization of funds. A uh, says City of Marshtown agrees to transfer to Hamlin County 100% of the opioid settlement funds uh, either allocated or which it has already received in all future payments. So the city will transfer to the county within 60 days of receipt all the money that they've re they receive from these opioid settlements. And uh, then in uh, under joint planning and implementation, Item A under number two is, is the Marshtown City Council will appoint one person to our opioid, abo opioid abatement committee. Uh, it's a six member committee uh, and with uh, Judge Collins, Commissioner Ahern represents you guys, um, uh, Amanda Hale, the finance department, 
uh, myself and um, Jerry Vagnier, who used to be uh, CEO of, of McNabb, uh, is on there uh, to bring his expertise. And then Barbara Horton, uh, who was our recovery court coordinator for a while, now works in, in purchasing and grant administration for us. So that, that's the committee makeup. And then um, under four, reporting and accountability, um, the, the county commission will make all the uh, uh, appropriations of these dollars. Our committee will come to you with recommendations on how, how to invest the money in our community uh, and uh, based on uh, criteria that we set, based on um, uh, presentations or applications by different agencies. Uh, one thing that, that uh, you approved during the budget process was using some of these monies for, uh, for the second year for treatment, for recovery court participants, and for um, the jail to work program. So uh, that's already in the budget. You guys approved that during the budget process. Um, then also during the budget process, you approved to use some of the money for the stretchers or the gurneys for, for EMS. So those, those funds are already budgeted. And so, but we'll come back to you from time to time with uh, recommendations on <coughs> what, what to spend. We do have one included in a, a budget amendment uh, that Amanda will present, and, and that's $5,000. And this is the committee made this recommendation last week, uh, $5,000 to buy Narcan uh, boxes for all the schools. And this was at the request of the school system, so there'll be a, a container near the AEDs in the schools where the Narcan will be stored. And so um, the teachers and staff know where it is when, when they need to use it on any students who may have, have overdosed. So, uh, so what this, what this uh, MOU is is basically the agreement between the City of Morristown and Hamlin County in operation of this opioid abatement committee and uh, how the dollars will flow for the next 16 years. There is a 60-day um, out clause in here for both. <coughs> Any questions for the mayor? I have a motion to approve. So, so moved. Mr. Doughty, a second. Mr. Huntsman, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. <clears throat> Item 5F, budget amendments. Ms. Amanda Hale, finance director. First budget amendment you have before you tonight is for the um, Ag Extension Office. Uh, when the budget was first prepared this year, I figured in a 3% COLA for their employees, but as y'all know, you approved a 5% for all other county employees there in the budget. So this budget amendment is needed to get the Ag Extension, the ones that's paid through the county, to that 5%. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Harville, thank you. <coughs> Ms. Howell made the motion, I'm sorry. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Excuse me. <coughs> In the second and last budget amendment before you tonight is just what the mayor spoke about the opioid abatement uh, committee and the, how those funds will be used. Um, Five thousand dollars is being transferred to purchase the Narcan boxes that you just mentioned. Um, there's some travel and other charges, some money being budgeted there for some training and travel that will come with that committee. And then the 150 is again what you all already approved during the budget. It's just the amendment hadn't been done. So you approved to give 150 through the jail to work and the uh, drug court, but then this actually appropriates those funds. Any questions? I ask for a motion to accept. Motion. Mr. Richardson, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Doty, thank you. 
All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> Motion passes. We have an item F3. Mr. Long. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> I would like to bring something to the Finance Committee and the full commissions tonight. Um, a real concern that I have the safety of the students of Hammond County. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the mayor and Mr. Bunch and uh, Mr. Mullins, Sheriff Mullins. They have done an excellent job of placing SOR officers in their schools. But I think everybody understands that we have three schools that do not have SRO officers in them. That being said, Alpha and Manley Elementary is on the same campus. That officer, you know, is in that building and can transfer to the other building in a matter of just, you know, a few minutes and seconds. The concern I have tonight is Russellville School. Uh, that intermediate and primary building is not on the same campus. It's divided by over a mile. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start by saying this has been bothering me a little bit when we talked about the SROs. The state of Tennessee will not furnish a SRO for the other school at Russellville. And so I think as a commission, our job is to protect our people in our county. Uh, I went up to this school and I parked at Russellville Primary and uh, if we had some a target that was hitting Russellville Intermediate by the time they radioed down to get the SRO to come that way, uh, it would be in a matter, I'd done it three times and it, it's a matter of about four to five minutes before they can arrive at Russellville Intermediate. Now when you do your research on these shootings in Texas, Florida and Nashville, the loss of life occurs within the first three to four minutes. So I think, and I totally believe that Russellville, one of the schools is a soft target. And I think it's our responsibility <coughs> to step up and uh, make sure that we protect the students and the staff in these schools. I do not want to stand before a family member or staff family or the media and answer to why we did not put one at Russellville knowing that that was a campus that did not have one on the campus and um, so I talked to the mayor I talked to Mr. Bunch I talked to Sh Sheriff Mullins and um, the cost of the SRO is $123,640. Now some of that would be uh, non-reoccurring expense. And uh, tonight I'm gonna put a motion on the floor that we furnish a SRO officer to the Russellville campus and that we fund that out of fund balance. And uh, I'm gonna put that on the floor as a motion and if we get a second, Mr. Chairman, I would ask that Mr. Bunch come first and explain the Russellville, the reason why, and then Mr. the mayor and Mr. Mullins. Okay, before you make that motion, <clears throat> I personally like to take it one step farther because this has been a passion of mine also, and I made it very clear whenever we uh, had the idea, the, the great idea, and the funding from the state for SROs at every school, and we wound up with three, you know, three schools that didn't have an SRO. I said then, I say it again, I echo what you said about Russellville, but uh, you go to Manly, especially at Manly, if that SRO is in one building, he's probably, and his car's at the other building, then you're probably gonna take three, four minutes to get from one building to the next. And again, it's that crucial time there. And I still maintain, I said it months ago, and I'll say it again, you know, this is one of those times when we need to bite the bullet and put students first. And uh, not just at Russellville, although I, I agree Russellville, 
especially with the road construction getting ready to start and everything up there, it's, it's going to be a headache. But I think we need to put one at every school. I think we need to do that. I think it's a shame that we don't fund an SRO at every school in this county. I said that then, I say it now. And so that, before you make that motion, that's my thought. That's my take on it. Yes. Are, are you are you suggesting we go ahead and get three? I'm suggesting we get as many as we need. <laughs> right now we need three. I say we we three. I, I don't think there's to me there's not a question. There's not a question yeah. whether we do it or don't. It's a matter of whether we will or won't. I, I just I think we're at that point where we have to. Chairman, Mr. D. Smith. What about Lincoln? Bobby, the Lincoln Elementary, and then we've mm. got the new Lincoln going in. Are we, are we equipped with SROs in both of those? Well, we are going to put one in the new Lincoln. Sheriff Mullins and I have been talking about that. When we do that, that will generate a new school ID number. When you get a new school ID number, mm. that then will allow the sheriff to apply for the $75,000 grant. The difference in the three schools we're talking mm. about do not have a separate school ID for those buildings. They're all under one school ID. And the money that comes for the grant that the sheriff gets every year and applies for is tied to a school ID number. I have requested that that be changed to have a certain distance between the buildings or a response time. And I was not able to push that through with the Tennessee uh, School Superintendents Association to get that Thank you. That clarifies, uh, but that's that's my heartfelt approach. That's my plea to this commission, Rodney. Okay, Jason. Yes, Mr. Rathbone. Okay, I raised four kids right here, and I'll tell you what: it would take one, just one time, to have an accident like that with somebody shooting. And we'd look back at ourselves and we'd say, nice. good nice. night. As a life, it's worth, you're, you're looking at what, uh, what, $400,000 to replace your money? We got plenty of money and a refund. Why do we want to take a chance on that? And as what's going on in the world today, it, it's reality. The way we're living in it. Absolutely. And I think we need to go ahead and do it. And, and I think also a uniformed officer in a school is, is a deterrent. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you you break into houses that are unlocked. If they're locked, it's harder. You move on. Yep. Same thing with an officer in the schools. You want to make a motion? Well, that being said, then I will make a motion. We put one in all three of them. But, uh, you know, when we get to second, we need to talk to the mayor. The we have a motion and a second, Mr. Doty. You okay, Mr. Johnson? I'm good. Okay, good. And I'd like to say something if I could. You go right ahead. Uh, you know, we're talking about the time frame when in the middle of the day, you actually really need to look at the time frame uh, at time schools are drop off and pick up times because you can triple to quadruple that time just from the sheer traffic. Because I do pick up in the Russellville and East Ridge areas and there's times that you're not getting any vehicle through, no matter if it's got lights, siren or anything, just because of no the sheer numbers go. of vehicles that are sitting there, there's no place for them to go. So I think it's a marvelous idea and uh, I applaud Mr. Long for bringing that forward to us and I urge the commission to step forward on this and approve. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else have anything to say? Ask Clarify them to the motion. speak up. So we, I apologize, sir. So we can hear uh, part of the people. If they're listening to a tape, they're not going to be able to hear okay. what Mr. Bunch said. And okay. most people want to hear this because they've got sure. kids and grandkids, sure. sir. Anyone? I'm sorry. Yeah, let's clarify that motion, please, and what schools are involved. Okay. I, I'll let Rodney clarify it. The motion would be to put a SRO officer at Russellville. I believe Mr. Bunch would be the intermediate school.
commission to word it would be to put a second SRO at Russellville Alpha and Manly Elementary Schools. Because right now I don't say this one's at primary or this okay. one's at intermediate. Okay. What we're really asking, what Mr. Long is asking for, Alpha. is to have a an SRO at each of those three elementary campuses that have the two buildings. That's what the recommendation would be. No, motion we, motion would be a second officer at Russellville Elementary, Alpha Elementary, and Manly Elementary. Are we all straight? Any questions? No. We need to get a second on them. Okay, Mr. Doty did. Okay. When when they when someone is absent, will there do you do you find somebody to take that SRO? If one of the SROs is Got out sick or something, another SRO that they're not there all day long, but there'll be another SRO that will visit that school throughout the day. We'll have multiple of them changing to that school just to get that school covered. So this okay. is one I want to applaud them for. Okay. So what we are experiencing is that if a SRO were to be absent, either because they were at training or <coughs> because they were ill, yeah. uh, law enforcement is working so that the SROs will rotate around to have a presence at those schools at various times to keep the deterrent factor so that, that there's not a predictability of when they will be there. Oh, okay. And so we have pulled, and a perfect example last year, I was at Whitesburg Elementary. The Russville Elementary uh, SRO was in training. The principal called, I'm worried about a parental custody issue at Russellville. The SRO immediately left Whitesburg and went to Russellville to accommodate. So. Uh, they are working very well as a team to move around to where that need is if there were to be someone out for training and other items. Okay, thank you. Also, Ms. Howell, the, the patrol division, if we're, if we're shorthanded in one school, our patrol division in that area of town, okay. when they're not on the call, they're to do walkthroughs as well. Okay, good thank job. You. Okay. Good job. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, Mr. Munch. Thank you. All right. Mr. Mayor, that's around $370,920 out of the fund balance. Some of that I know is non-reoccurring. Right. About, you could roughly say $50,000 per is non-reoccurring, and the rest would be reoccurring year, year in and year out. Um, we have the reserves to take care of this. And, um, we, we grew fund balance um, based on the estimates that, that we put together so far for last year. And, and uh, so I would, I would recommend that you fund it. I too want to commend Commissioner Long. Uh, it's been something that's been on my heart. I know it's been on his heart and I appreciate him stepping up and initiating this. Outstanding. So let's take a vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes. Hey, Bobby. Yes. What about Mr. Bunch? What Can you get numbers on these schools you don't have numbers for no. now? He's trying, but no. Can you get one for Manly or Alpha? No, that, it's, a D, it's a DOE thing. We could. But if we do that, what will more than likely occur is I will need another principal. Another, there are administrative things that go every time I give a new uh, ID for the school. And in the long run, our costs will actually go up. So we looked at that, and, and I'll go back and relook. But when we looked at it last, what I was told is if I go, I need two IDs for Russellville, and I need two IDs for Manly, and I need two IDs, there are certain things that come with establishing that ID and the amount of people that I would need to add to meet the requirements set by the state to meet that would exceed the $75,000 grant. So the return on investment was not there with going through the uh, heartache I won't use the phraseology I started to, uh, the heartache to make that occur and get it to where we could get the grant. That was what we looked at last year when this first started. And, and I just want to say thanks to everybody involved in this process. Folks, go back to where we were when I first got here. We had four SROs. 
two in each high school, one county, one city, to the point now that we're debating, do we have all, we've got all the schools covered with one, and now we're debating, do we put a second? I just wanna thank you for all of our students and staff for putting their interests in, your, uh, for, in the forefront of your thoughts uh, so that we keep them safe. So thank you. I have one, one question. You may not be able to answer this off the top of your head, but if we got a, stu uh, excuse me, a school ID number for those other three, and I know you'd probably have to add another principal. Probably a little more than that. Yeah, but you know, you've got a principal and assistant principal mm -hmm. on those campuses, so you're not talking about a huge amount of money to take the assistant principal up to principal. I understand there's other things in there, but how much of a difference would there be if we but got the grants? I will go. I, I will go back and relook at it. We looked at it last year when this first started coming up. Was it worth it? Uh, and the answer that came back to me from our business section and looking at what we would have to go through was not there. Okay. Uh, but I'll go. I, I'll take that action to go back and relook at it and uh, give you a better answer. And it's not one. We would still need the SROs. It would just be a difference of whether we get the grant or not. And it'd take me time to do that. So okay. I, please, please don't allow that to hold you up for what you're trying to do. No, we're, <laughs> we're, I think we're going to move ahead okay. with this. Right. But thank you very much. Mr. Bob. Yes. May I ask a question? Yes. Would he share that with every one of us when he gets the figures, please? He will. Oh, yes, please. Sure. yes ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Oh, oh, one. Just real quick. Uh, just real quick for our regular calendar items for the, uh, the final meeting, Mr. Mayor, if you've got a second. The regular calendar items um, has a one for the bid award for the fire truck purchase for South Hamlin that we didn't have in the committee meeting. Bids for the fire truck for South. This is part of the CDBG grant that pays uh, 425000 of a half million dollar uh, fire truck. Uh, the bids will be opened Thursday of the meeting that afternoon. So we don't have any bid results right now. And so we will bring that to uh, the commission uh, on, on commission day. Okay. So that, thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Hahn of the Finance Committee. We will now head to the Personnel Committee. Chairman Doty, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do I have anyone wishing to address this committee on agenda items? I do so now. Seeing none, we'll move forward. Item 3A, old business, there's none. Item 4A, approval of education pay submissions. And we have, we have two folks that have uh, received degrees. I need a motion to approve these, please. So move. I move Mr. Horner, do I have a second? Second. Second, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. Any discussion on this? All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, our sheet shows a 4D, but we have none listed. For right. It. Um, so we'll. Is, is there one you think? No, it's not. Okay. So we'll detract from it. Take that off the regular counter in a minute. Um, no items of interest. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Doty. We will now turn to Calendar and Rules Committee. Chairman Doty, you're rec you recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I call the Calendar and Rules Committee meeting to order. Do I have any visitors wishing to address this committee at this time on agenda items only? Seeing none, we'll move forward. Old business, we have none. New business, item 4A, the review of regular calendar items. And if you would remember, we will have the <coughs> section B on this one, which will be the award for the, the fire truck grant. And then under budget amendments will be G3, which will be the funding 
for the new three SRO officers that we just passed in committee. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Horner. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Miss Ahern. Any discussion on this? All those in favor, let me know I'm saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Doty. Counter rules. That concludes our committees. We've got a few announcements, and then we'll move to another item. Um, oh, excuse me. What do I would just I missed the consent calendar. Oh my! I'm, I'm sorry. I was I moving you. on through. Uh, I'll call the calendar rules committee meeting back to order, and I'll repair my mistake. Item 4B is review of the consent calendar items. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Motion, Mr. Hahn, do I have a second? Second. Second, Ms. Ahern. Any discussion on these? Hearing none, call for the vote. All those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Now that's all I have, Mr. Right. Chairman. Thank you, Thomas. My bad, too. I overlooked that. Flipped the page. My bad. Um, okay. That concludes our business uh, as far as agenda. A uh, couple of announcements. This Thursday evening from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. <coughs> is the uh, um, retirement reception for Road Superintendent Barry. Barry Poole. If you can attend, come by that, two to four, out at the um, road department. Also, we have a swearing-in ceremony this coming Monday, a week from today, uh, swearing-in for Hammond County government's elected officials that were recently elected. They will take office beginning September 1. Um, also, commissioners, October the 1st this year. It's Tuesday, October the 1st. I believe that's right, Tuesday. Anybody? That's correct. Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday, October 1st, we have our regional meeting this year, the Tennessee County Commission Association Regional Meeting with Charlie Curtis. It will be in um, Norris uh, Museum of Appalachian this year, not downtown Knoxville. So if you are planning to attend that, please let Trish know. We're going to... Um, schedule the van and we'll see what other accommodations we need to do for those that would like to attend that. Is that good? So, um, all minds clear. Chairman Catshaw. Yes. Quick question. Yes. Uh, when are we going to hear from the contract attorney and when are they going to start negotiating the bills that we have kicked around? Yeah, ma'am, I, I can't answer that. You'll have to wait on what we all get, I guess. So I, I don't know that answer. Okay. Could you ask the mayor so that we could at least have an well, idea? He's alluded that they're in conversation, and, and he will let us know when that time comes. Uh, you're welcome to ask him. I've asked him. I mean, the, uh, they have talked with the lawyer, and under the way I understand it, we don't tip our – hold on, Bob. i got some other announcements. Yeah. Um, you don't tip your hat to the other team until you're ready to roll. That's what I understand. It makes it public information and they can use it against you. May I address the mayor, please? Well, you're welcome to address Mr. the mayor. Mr. Mayor, we've seen bills, and I last, if I remember correctly, was a $64,000 nightmare. Any idea when this will start negotiating? We start. Okay, any progress that you could report to us? When can we expect a report? Okay. That's why that was the answer the last time, so I'm certainly looking forward to it, sir. Thank you, sir. Somebody correct me. Was it 64 or 62? 62? I was thinking it was 64. I was thinking 62, so I, I don't know for sure. I can pull my notebook, yeah. but I'm almost That's positive. Right. Uh, 64. Okay. Now, anything else? I want to read one thing real quick. It was alluded to that we'd kick the can down the road. 
on the noise, I just want to read this real quick, that Chairman Richardson has put in time and work on this. And last year, on the 18th day of May, 2023, this body, by the way, passed a resolution that reads, this legislative body of Hammond County wants to ensure its citizens can expect to have quiet enjoyment of their property during certain hours of the day. We took this action. Also, this legislative body, Hamlin County, finds that unreasonable and, un and excessive noise is detrimental to the physical and mental and social well-being of the citizens of Hamlin County, as well as to their comfort, living conditions, general welfare, and safety. And the property owner or tenant has the right to enjoy his or her property without unreasonable or excessive noise interference from their neighbors. Disruption of quiet enjoyment may or from non-compliant offenders may constitute a legal nuisance and can be reported to law enforcement for legal action. So there, ma'am, we did take action. As you alluded, we kicked the can down the road. Well, you are correct my, in my movement. I'd just like to see something done. Well, we uh, all would, but, quick, but your reference to this body not trying to do something is not taken well, very well. Well, my reference this was chair we had kicked it. it. And we have a uh, quick question. Is there any chance at some point we can be like the city and have our boards is online? What you want? Is that what you want? Be like the city? Is that what you're asking? May I ask a question, please, sir, without you correcting and, me? And yes, we can at some point maybe do what you're asking. Well, my example would be like the solid waste board. Yes, ma'am. I had questioned about when the appointment was last made and when it was due again. It would be very helpful. I know the city has it on their web page, and you can go in and access it, and it's very handy, especially if, if people If they are... have it, then you ought to be able to see what their appointments are. Can I finish, are. please? Well, you can, but you're making a point that we all know. Well, I'd like to see it for Hamwood County, because I've made several requests, five to be exact, of when Mr. Horner was appointed to the Solid Waste Board, and I would love to find a way to get an answer, sir. Gotcha. It would be very handy, not only to me, to other members of the community as well. Duly noted. Thank you. Now, anybody else? Hey, Bob.